We all share the same goal in the music industry, to work with more talented and exciting people. But how do you do that? How do you get the jobs you know you want to be working on, and how do you get more of those? Over the past eight years running a mixing and mastering studio, I've learned three basic principles we're gonna map out in this video. The first is proof of concept, and that starts and ends with your portfolio of work. No one will hire you as a mixer or producer if you can't show them you've done it before and you've delivered results. And by that I mean not some stems you downloaded from a website to practice mixing on, but a portfolio of work that includes release materials on the platforms and release material where you had to liaise and work to a brief. There's probably those of you who are watching this that don't have a portfolio or one you're not completely happy with. So here's my advice. Don't wait for projects to land on your lap to build a strong portfolio. Go out. Build a portfolio you're proud to show others. During my formative years in uni, I made it known amongst everyone that I was the recording and mixing guy. If you had a music project, I was the person you'd go to. And that meant good, bad, and ugly. I was doing free projects because all I had to offer was my time and effort. This meant in the first two years of uni, I had built up a portfolio of over 50 projects, which then I cherry picked those to include in my folio and leverage them to launch a freelance career, get internships, assistant positions, and ultimately with all of that building up, I built this studio. Another example is the other week, I was speaking with a producer that wanted to get onto the radar of a few labels I worked with. This producer was super talented and I said, look at all the other producers the label were giving advances to. These other producers we both knew or had worked with at some point. They all had previously built up a body of work writing and producing records for their solo project featuring artists on that label. That body of work showed a track record and proof of concept to pitch to the label to work with them. And that helped them score advances to work and develop artists for them, but actually get paid for it rather than doing it for their own solo project. What could this look like for you? Now, I know it's difficult to assess where and how to start building a portfolio if you have no projects coming in. Start with keeping your finger on the pulse. We all listen to music. We all have records which come on our radar which we enjoy, and they all are worked on by other professionals. So just like yourself, you're only one click away from an interaction. Find out who the writers were, the producer, the mixer, everybody on those records you enjoy. Build relationships with them, offer to help, help in every and which way possible, whether that's offering to assist for them, help them do editing or prep work, whatever it might be, get your foot in the door to begin building up relationships, opportunities, and ultimately credits for your portfolio. If you have no footing or experience at offer to offer a professional, start local build that experience up. Free work can be a dirty work to some, but like I said, you can't wait around for your portfolio to build itself. Find local artists, independent acts, or even newer producers you can offer to mix for in exchange for that experience. And this is all really critical because it leads into the next building block for getting more clients. If a mixing engineer mixes a song but tells no one about it, did he or she even mix it? Some of the most incredible mixes which have come to my studio have been from part-time engineers and you've never heard their name. And that's because it's not just the mixes people hear which get you hired, but it's the work others people see you doing and you need to get noticed. So how do you get noticed? Well, you need to scream it from the top of the mountain. You need to have social media, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. You should be active on all of them. And yes, people should know every project you're working on all the time and what you're doing at the studio. Every week, I have six to 12 releases coming out and I make sure every single person who follows me knows that. Why? Because it's all about visibility. People want to know other people's business. They want to know who you're working with, who you have worked with, and they want to go check them out. To see. Even if nothing is getting released this week or the next week, you need to make the effort to showcase maybe just a small snippet of what you're doing in the studio. If you're unsure of what this looks like or where to start, here are some case studies for you to go check out. John McLucas. Believe in a thing called love. So I believe in a thing called love. Alyssa Wilkins. We censor my favorite part. And then we add in her vocals and we get this. Julian Renoir or Spatial Soul. Counts the vibe of the production, the mixing decisions, what kind of reverb we're going to be using, the making. As well as Baro Avad. Then we'll add sound effects and percussion. These are really incredible producers that are doing a great job at showcasing their story and making themselves visible with what they're doing in the studio. And now there's so much conflicting information about networking in the music industry. I'm gonna lay out some ground rules. We need to get these out of the way. Here's how to network like a pro in the music industry.
It's not who you know, it's how you know them. Never go in cold, always have a connection point or a contact point to that person. You have to stop thinking about yourself. You need to listen and when appropriate, do what you can to help other people. And lastly, in Andrew Sheps's word, don't be a dick. Because your network is what brings the efforts of building your portfolio and having visibility full circle. They're the contacts that will recommend you, bring you on projects, be your word of mouth and help you get clients in the door. So now, how do you expand that network? Well, we're going to refer back to point two of how to network like a pro in the music industry. Never go in cold and always have a connection point. Now, with the assumption that you're building your portfolio, there are going to be a whole bunch of connection points you could reach out to and connect with. Each release will have one, a few, or all of the following. Writers, producers, recording engineers, assistants, vocal producers, musicians, instrumentalists, artwork, visual artists, videographers. Like you, they're working with the same clientele you're working with and you want to work with more. So send them a DM on Instagram, ping them an email, and if you genuinely like the work on a record they did, let them know. Don't make an ask at this point or pitch them, just send them a message, and it can be as simple as this. Hey Jane Doe, I worked on the mix for the Pepper Flight Birds record, and I wanted to let you know the vocal recording was beautifully done, great tone. Just wanted to give you a kudos on the work well done warmly the mixer p.s what mic did you pair with those vocals i have to know they sounded great now with all those cogs of the wheel in play proof of concept with the portfolio you're building visibility of the work you're doing in the studio and network and contact points of professionals you're building you can go and create a machine which is self-fulfilling and builds itself you begin building a great portfolio, showing proof of concept. And that's going to give you the, the opportunity to be visible with the work you're doing in the studio. And that's going to get you in on building connection points to help build your network out. And then that continues to spider out as your network strengthens and refers more work in. So if you enjoyed this video, feel free to check out these others. Remember to subscribe for more. And until next time, take care.